You reach a point in your Spanish sometimes where you know how to say a lot, you can express yourself really well, but you still just feel like there's a certain something missing. You might just feel like you don't blend in, or it just doesn't feel very natural when you talk to native speakers, especially if you have a harder time understanding than responding. And why is that? Well, it's probably because the things that you've learned don't always apply in real, everyday Spanish. Hi guys, it's Elise from Jive World, and today we're going to talk about phrases and words in Spanish that aren't necessarily wrong, but they're not the most native sounding things to say sometimes. If you want to sound more native, this video is for you, my friend. I think some of these are pretty simple, some of them you might expect, but some of them might shock you, so keep on watching. So chicos, first we're going to talk about basic greetings and phrases. I think this is a place where a lot of people could use some corrections because first impressions are really important. You know, if there's any time that you would want to blend in more like a native, it would be with these everyday interactions and phrases that you'll use on a daily basis. Lo más básico. Starting off with ¿Cómo estás? How are you? Okay, there is nothing wrong with ¿Cómo estás? in and of itself. It's fine to use, but there are certain ways to use and not use it better. Two ways, actually. So first off, let me tell you right now, if you say como estas to every single person that you come in contact with when you meet them, you're doing it wrong. I think that we often overuse como estas from a US and maybe Canada perspective because in our countries, when we see strangers even, when you talk to cashiers at the grocery store, passers-by on the street, other people at the bus stop, you'll ask them, how are you? So then, when English speakers go to Spanish-speaking countries, they have that same habit, but just in another language. But the truth is that in a lot of countries, como estas isn't used as frequently, especially not with strangers. And it's making you stick out like a sore thumb, okay? You've got to stop asking every single person you encounter, como esta or como estas, because the truth is, Como esta or como estas is really only a part of greeting people that you've already met or people that you're friends with. Instead, if you want to greet the taxi driver, passerby on the street, or a shop owner, you greet them by the time of day. So this could be buenos dias in the morning, buenas tardes in the afternoon, or buenas noches after it gets dark. And keep in mind that buenas noches isn't just used to say goodnight like I'm going to bed in Spanish. You use it to greet people after it's gotten dark. Again, it's not incorrect or horribly off-putting or offensive or anything to ask a stranger como estas. It's just not, it's not what natives do. But moving on, if you are in a como estas situation, that doesn't mean that you have to use como estas because there are other alternatives. Like for example, in informal situations, you could use como te va, how's it going? or que tal? It's just like kind of like what's up? It's also worth noting that a lot of Spanish-speaking countries vary in their ways of like asking how you are or just what's up and it can get very very regional or dialectical. Like for example in Mexico it's not uncommon to hear que onda or que rollo. I think que rollo is a bit more like of youth or younger people but what else? There's also in Argentina que me cuentas or que te cuentas which is kind of just like tell me what's going on in your life. Moving on, let's talk about adios. I think adios is really overused by non-native speakers, so here are some alternatives that you can use alongside natives. Nos vemos. Nos vemos is a classic and it works in pretty much any Spanish-speaking country. It just means like, you know, we'll see each other or basically I'll see you. And this was funny for me learning Spanish because people will say this even to people that it's fairly certain they're never going to see them again. So I guess it's really just kind of like a figure of speech. There's also hasta luego, which means until later, but but not specifically later as we use it in English, like later that day. It just kind of means like until the next time I see you. So until like that, that later, that one. And another way to see somebody off is with cuídate or cuídense if it's multiple people. And this just means take care of yourself. How heartwarming is that? Now that we've gotten greetings out of the way, it's time to talk about the please, thank yous, and your welcomes, okay? Pleasantries are just as important in Spanish-speaking countries, but that doesn't mean you have to stick to the same old por favor, gracias, and de nada, siempre, right? Gotta mix it up, folks. Starting off with please, por favor. It's perfectly fine to say por favor, but people love to remix it and specifically shorten it. Don't be surfaced if you're on the street and you hear people say porfa or porfis. Both of these are kind of like shortenings of por favor, but they kind of have different connotations. Porfa is a little bit more neutral, so you can use this with friends or, you know, in more respectful situations, but, you know, at that point, if you're in a respectful situation, just say por favor. 
Okay. Whereas Porfis is definitely more of like a cutesy younger generation thing. Like you're not gonna hear really old people say Porfis. It's kind of like a, a meme internet kind of thing. And alternatively, you can always express please without actually using a phrase that means please. For example, you could just proceed whatever you want with the verb poder in the conditional. So podrías or podría. You know, could you? And you know, could, just like in English, this makes it a bit more polite. It's not demanding something, it's saying, you know, please, if you would do this. So for example, me podrías mandar tus notas? Could you send me your notes? And this is more, you know, polite and a bit more respectful than just saying like, hey, mandame tus notas. Rápido. And moving on, talking about gracias. Okay, gracias is perfectly fine. This is native enough, but I'm here to offer you options. Okay, so there's agradecer. This verb means to thank. So if you want to thank someone for what they've done, there's an option to say lo agradezco, which means like I thank you for it. The lo is referring to the favor or whatever they've done for you, and you're saying this, I'm thankful for it. You might think this sounds a little bit formal, but it's really not too much, even for a conversation with a friend. It just means, you know, I really, really appreciate this. But let's say you're the one giving the favor in this interaction. You don't have to just say de nada all the time. Try one of these instead. You could say por nada, which just means like, you know, it was nothing. No hay de que. This means pretty much like there's no need to thank me. Or you could also just shorten no hay de que to just de que. And this is pretty common to hear between friends. Or you could always say it's it's a pleasure, es un placer. So now you can get what you want and give people what they want, but just a little bit more natively. Now, there are gonna be times where you don't understand what someone said to you, or you're just not gonna know something, and that's okay, as long as you keep these phrases in your back pocket. Stop saying, puede repetir por favor? Because this is so long, it's such a mouthful, and nobody really says this on an everyday basis except for tourists and non-native speakers. I understand this is something that they teach in those kind of slow speak audio courses, but it's really, really not that native. If a native Spanish speaker doesn't understand what somebody just said, you're probably gonna here one of these three options. There's como, which by definition this word means how, but you know, people use it in Spanish the same way that we use what in English. No entiendo or no entendí. There's a slight difference here. No entiendo is kind of like I don't understand, whereas I feel like no entendí is kind of just like I didn't get it or I didn't catch that. But if you've already used these two and you still don't understand, there's no shame in asking somebody to repeat something slower. So you could just say, más lento, por favor. You know, I know native Spanish speakers that can't understand other countries. For example, you know, in Dominican Republic, they speak very, very fast. So that is a place where you're probably going to need them to speak slower. And while we're at it, let's tackle no sé. No sé is perfectly fine to use, but there are other things that natives say that just have a little, a little bit more flavor, if you will. Ni idea, and this means no idea. It's a shorter form of no tengo ni idea. I have no idea. Que sé yo? What do I know? I would know nothing about this. Or in general, you can always say, quien sabe? Who knows? Something also important regarding no sé is that it's sometimes more tactical to say no lo sé. And no lo sé means kind of like this, I don't know. You should definitely use no lo sé in conversations when, for example, somebody asks you a question and this specific thing, you don't know. There's an antecedent and you're referring back to it. No lo sé. I don't know it. Okay guys, finally, let's get feely. Let's talk about emotions. I think that emotional phrases and expressing emotions is where you're gonna see a lot of diversity and a lot of different phrases being used. So why restrict yourself? Let's talk about general feeling first, okay? For feelings, you're most likely used to using estar, to be, right? So like, estoy triste, estoy cansada. But there are other ways to express feeling and I'm not just talking about sentirse, to feel, okay? There are other words as well. For Feelings, you can often use the verb andar, and this is very, very common to hear, especially in more informal situations, and it just refers to like a general state of being. You might have learned andar as to walk, but it also works in this sense. So if you want to say you're sad, instead of saying estoy triste, you could say ando triste. Instead of saying estoy muy mal, you could say ando muy mal. Ando enfermo, I'm sick. Ando muy feliz, I'm happy. Ando con muy poca energía. I don't have a lot of energy. So there you have andar. 
You can also use the verb ponerse when you want to talk about a sudden onset of emotions or kind of like a becoming. For example, se puso triste cuando tuvieron que cancelar la boda. She got really sad when they had to cancel the wedding. So you see here, se puso is in the past, but you can also use it in the present, of course. So for example, she always gets really happy when she's with her mom. Siempre se pone muy feliz cuando está con su mamá. Next, let's talk about no me importa. I do not care. What are some other phrases that we can use that natives use for this expression? You could say me da igual, which is kind of like it doesn't matter to me, or you could say me da lo mismo. It's all the same to me. But you should know that there are some semantic differences between, you know, no me importa and these two other alternatives because like, no me importa is a little bit strong. It's like, I don't care about this, I'm disinterested. Whereas me da igual or me da lo mismo can be used in both strong and soft situations. So like, you know, you could use these in an argument, but you could also just say these if you're like indecisive at a restaurant and you really just don't care what you eat. ¿Quieres tomar cerveza o vino? Eh, me da igual. Finally, let's talk about what you like and what you don't like. I think that you're probably used to using gustar for everything. Actually, first I should teach you how to use gustar with people because there's a little bit of confusion and you don't want to end up in an awkward situation. So if you use gustar in the context of a person, right, you are saying that you feel romantically towards this person. So if you say, tú me gustas, it's I like you in this romantic way. So instead, if you just want to say that you like somebody in general, that you enjoy their company, you're going to use the phrase caer bien or caer mal. This means kind of like they agree with you or you get along or you're just, you know, simpatico. So instead of me gustas to say I like you, me caes bien. You know, you make a good impression on me, we get along. If you don't like somebody, unfortunately, you can say no me caes bien or me caes mal. Note that the latter is a bit stronger than the former. Now, talking about liking things, let's talk about some good alternatives to gustar. For something that you don't like, you could always say, no es mi preferido. Like, this isn't my favorite thing of this type. Obviously, this isn't as strong as saying you don't like something. It's more just like, you know, this is all right, but for example, no es mi canción preferida. It's not my favorite song. Now, talking about something that you do like, a good alternative for gustar is encantar. And lucky for you, it works exactly the same way as gustar, so why not use it, you know? Me encantó la película. I love the movie. Folks, these phrases, if you do choose to use them, will not only help you blend in a little bit better, but they'll also help you understand natives better. It goes both ways. Because these are part of the wider range of expressions that native speakers use on an everyday basis. You know, there are a handful of ways to express anything in Spanish, and you know, the more receptive you are to these different expressions, the more resilient, the more flexible of a speaker you become. And that's how you become a true member of the Spanish-speaking community. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment other phrases that you've learned in school or courses, but don't actually hear that often in everyday speech. Happy studying, happy Spanish speaking, and stay jive world fluent. See ya!